forget to hit that subscribe button and go check out our Instagram pages where I post daily original photos of our life, our animals, and everything in between. What do you She's got? She's busy. What do you got, Daddy? It's a secret. What do you got? What do you got? I got donuts! Alright, so we are already out and about early this morning. We got donuts and we are going down to the FedEx Freight Hub which is different than the FedEx Ship Center because we are going to pick up our new rack. It is finally here after a very long wait and a lot of weather delays. It is finally here for us to pick up. And then I think we are gonna get some egg boxes ready for our incubator. We wanna double check humidity and temperature because we have two girls that are almost, that are probably gonna be ready in the next, what, about 25 days. We should be expecting eggs. So we wanna just double check and make sure everything is just perfect so let's get going and we're gonna go get our rack first do it <laughs> designated spot for it we're having to rearrange once again so overall the rack made it safe and sound there is a couple minor scratches but nothing we can't live with look how tiny that is oh my gosh here let's grab grab one of these Boop. look at the, meant to be this is so crazy all right we are gonna get all these tubs cleaned up and get the whole rack filled up. You ready? Last one, all clean and done. These things fit perfect. A lot of people said they fit really snug with the Freedom Breeders, but there's a little bit, they move in and out pretty good. They're not really snug. There's a little bit of a gap, but. Awesome. Can't wait to get babies in there. All right, so when Freedom Breeder sent us a tub, they did send us one extra, which was really nice of them. So now we need to get our herb set out. We're gonna get it connected so we can get half of this rack warming up. All right, so we got our Redline Edition Herb Stack 2 out, and this is the one that we had picked up off of Craigslist uh, about a month or so ago. So this is the one we're gonna use for the hatching rack, and we're gonna get it all set up now. So um, with your little sea serpents package, there's a little piece of foil tape and it's very hard to see in there. But so the probe is on this rack and there's a little piece of foil tape that is holding that probe down on top of the heat tape. You cannot use these racks without a thermostat. Um, they will overheat. They will end up causing serious injury or death to your snakes without a thermostat. So just keep that in mind if you've never used a rack system before. Um, but you only do one probe and this tape, the way they do it is interwoven like this through each shelf. And then what they did on the back side, see if we can get over here, daddy's tape in our ther or thermostat probe kind of up to the top to keep it nice and tidy is there's actually two strips of heat tape. So there's one cord here and then there's one cord for the bottom rows. So this rack, is an 18 
level rack. And so um, they ran tape for each nine levels. They split it into two. Right now, we are only gonna plug in the first nine levels to get them heated up. We wanna make sure it works. And we are considering taking some of our smaller babies out of our DIY shelf and putting them in here. So the good thing about these racks is they are really tall and space saving, especially for our situation. However, when you get the thermostat up there, it doesn't reach down to a plug. So yeah, we're gonna have to figure out some extension cord situations because this is now the second time we've had this issue. And it's on. And it's, oh, sorry. It's all right, it's blinking. I have to uh, get it all we set. We gotta up. turn number two off. All right, so while daddy's getting that all set up, this rack came from Chris over at Sea Serpents. Um, this rack holds, what is it, 54 tubs? Uh -huh. um, it is 18 levels tall, as I said. And then this rack would normally come with the Vision tubs, but we opted to not get their tubs. And he will take the price of those tubs off of the, of the main price if you contact him and talk to him personally. Um, so we had already ordered our Freedom Breeder tubs because we like these because they have the cup holder in them. So overall, this rack was, I mean, pretty much exactly what we expected. It is very, very slender and I love how tall it is. This is actually one of their newer designs. So I think it's gonna work out great. <laughs> when we ordered this rack, uh, we were not anticipating having as many females breeding as we do now. So now we're thinking we may need to order another one. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so um, we're going to see how the first couple clutches, we want to see their size. And then we're going to kind of make an executive decision on if we need to place another order for a rack. I think we're just going to do it anyways. I'm sorry, <laughs> but having too many babies is a hell of a good problem to have. All right. So we will check back in a little bit and make sure it's all the heat tape is functioning properly. We're gonna test temperatures. We're probably gonna let this heat up for quite a few days before we ever put snakes in it. He's like, oh, they got the hint. And he's like, yeah, sometimes you gotta let the puppy dog out. It's a puppy lizard. Come on. Huh, little foot puppy lizard? Dude, seriously, we got things to do. He's like, I'm here to hang out. There you go. I know, you always want to get down. Come on. There you go. Come up here. Just not on, not on the neck. He never wants to hang out. He always wants to... Ow, oh, that's my neck. Oh. He's like, turn around. I can climb down, mama. <laughs> no. Just don't go up my head. Put your hood on. Oh, where oh, is it? Too late. He's in it now. Is he? He's like, I just went down. I want to explore my room. We don't want to clean up poop, dude. You're cleaning it up. You let him out. <laughs> All right. Quick intermission. The little guy wanted out. Right there. There he goes. And that's how we know he's a boy. Look at that thing. And he does this every time he comes out. Thank goodness. I know. Get out of it this time. <laughs> ah. You gonna wipe his butt? <laughs> See, we even have to wipe the lizard's butt. Chicken! Chicken wire! <laughs> What's up, dude? He's like, I'm gonna lay out in the sun spot. Oh, he found a nice warm spot. Oh, is that so good? God, it's freaking bad. Hi. All right, you soak up the sun. I'll give you a few minutes and then we gotta put you back. Uh, 
Look at how big his. Look how big that is. He looks like a. Oh, chill out. He sees the dog. <laughs> Luna, go. <laughs> He's not too fond of the dog. <laughs> Put your baby back, Daddy. Yeah, he's such a good lizard. And yes, his water is a murky yellow because it needs to be changed again. Monitors live in their water and they're disgusting. So let's see. We got a little reptile room update real quick. We still have our rats there, our heirloom rat rack, our DIY, our freedom breeder, Nebula. And now we have this beautiful hatchling rack over here. And then we just kind of scooted our desk down and those are our mice. And our homeschool room is steadily turning into just a reptile domain. All right, so now we're gonna go out to our garage where our incubator is located and we are gonna start- Mixing. <laughs> mixing some vermiculite. Um, and we, what we're gonna do, well, we'll show you when we get out there. All right, we got our sticker put on. And this is our nice DIY incubator. If you wanna see how we built this, the link will be in the description below. So we pulled out a few bins. Three. Yes. So we are gonna fill up three bins with vermiculite. We got our scale to weigh everything out. And we have, where are they, Daddy? Over there, sorry. So we got these off of Amazon. We got quite a few. Um, we're gonna put one in each one. We wanna see the humidity and um, the temperature inside the tub. And we just want to make sure that everything is good to go before our girls lay their eggs here in the next 25 days. All right. So we just have these little six quart kind of shoe box Sterilite containers and we got them in a huge pack from Walmart for what? I don't know. They, they were pretty cheap. So we're going to zero this out and we're going to do a one to one ratio by weight of the vermiculite and water. So we have some organic vermiculite that we just picked up from our local hardware store. What are we at? I think we did 150 grams. A little bit more. Okay. So as close as you can. 152, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. Grams are small. Okay, and it really, water is very heavy, so it really doesn't take very much. Yeah. All right, we're a little bit over, but that's okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're just going to mesh this all around by hand. It's like you're making bread. <laughs> Gotta knead it. I was gonna say, are we just gonna use baking terms? We're gonna knead. So the consistency that we're looking for, cause it's still gonna feel kind of dry in your hands, but when you squish it together, you want it to kind of form and then crumble apart. You don't want this sopping wet. So you're just gonna keep doing that until you get it all mixed in and make sure that all around here is gonna kind of do the same thing. And then what do you think the depth is in this? About an inch and a half, I would say. Yeah, Maybe almost two, two inches. Yeah. Just enough to where you can make little divots for the eggs if you're not doing um, like an easy hatch tray or something else to go on top here. We have chosen not to do that. We're just gonna stick them directly into this we feel we need one of those in the future then of course we'll make adjustments but for our first season we're just going to try old school see how it clumps together in these different areas i think we've got it all mixed together good yeah i think we're good okay i'm just going to kind of level it out here a little bit and then what we are going to do is we are going to add one of these little thermometers that we got we're just going to kind of push it in there to where we can see it We'll show it when we put it in there. And then, because we wanna get an accurate reading, we are gonna add a suppressant seal. Um, we have never tried this method before, but it seems to work for a lot of people. So we're gonna go ahead and try it this season. You know, hold that here. I'll put the top on it like I did last time because this stuff is finicky sometimes. And mama's not very good at tearing this. 
as you can tell. All right, so now our box is ready to go. We're gonna go put it in our snazzy incubator. And then we already did one and we are gonna do one more. And what we we're trying to do or trying to accomplish is we're gonna put one on each one of these shelves and we wanna make sure that we're getting a, what do I wanna say? Very even temperature. Yeah, a very even temperature among the shelves. Make sure the humidity is good in each of the tubs for uh, the vermiculite before we get eggs going in. It's always a good idea to try this stuff ahead of time to make sure everything's good. You don't want to be trying to dial in your temperatures when you've got eggs already in there. That's what you get a lot of problems with neurological issues, snakes not developing properly. Um, that temperature needs to stay very constant through that entire 55 to 60 days until they hatch. So that's very, very important. And with it as cold as it is and that much water in the bottom, we only dropped five degrees having the door open that long. Ideally, you don't have the door open that long. Ideally, you get in there, you do what you need to do, you get out. We have a really good setup because we can see our entire rack um, system with the door closed. So, I mean, it works for us. I mean, our light switch is inside, like we showed on the DIY. It's right up there. Yeah. But, I mean, open the door, click the button, close it. Boom, done. All right, real quick while we're looking at the incubator, let's show off some stickers that we got. We got Green Room Pythons, Supernatural Morphs, and then we got LSR, which is Lone Star Reptiles, and then we got... Royally Morphodelic? Yeah, there we go. I'm all, getting all <laughs> tongue-tied here with all the names. And then these are people we have gotten uh, different snakes from. It's the Osman Reptiles and... Uh, Python Perfection and these are magnets. So these are kind of cool because you can move them around and they're not as permanent as the stickers. All right, can you see? I can see your... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our incubator. Our incubator is set to 87. That way, because in the boxes, it's going to probably be a couple degrees warmer. So we want to keep our boxes at 88 to 90. Is... That is the best. 88 to 90 for the ball pythons. Um, you don't want any fluctuation at temperature. I mean, very little, if any. You get in here, you get out, and then that's all there is to it. There is no opening the boxes, none of that stuff. Um, our humidity, also, we want to keep it between 90 and 100%. It's not hard, because with the press and seal, it's going to keep in the humidity and all that. That's why we use it, so. But yes, as you can see already, the temperature is steadily climbing, and the humidity is already optimal for what we're looking for. And then, with the humidity, the main thing is, is you, the eggs, you do not want them to dry out. Um, and then that steady temperature, as I said, is to prevent any birth defects. Uh, because a lot of birth defects that happen um, are due to fluctuating temperatures. And if you're worried about the press and seal, um, the press and seal actually has, what do I want to say? It, it it's allows, breathable. Yes, it's breathable. So um, you don't have to worry about drilling any extra holes. Um, your snake can breathe just fine in there. It, it'll be perfectly fine. There's a lot of people that use the press and seal, have very great success with it, and that's why we've decided to do it this season as well. But Less so, maintenance. Yes. If it seals in the humidity, you don't have to get in there and keep filling them up. Otherwise, you have to keep an eye on the humidity and add more water if you need to. And we are very, very lucky that we were able to find one that with a clear front, so that way we don't have to get in there and open up the boxes as often. Now, it's not going to hurt the eggs if you need to get in there to open them up to either remove a moldy egg or maybe you have an egg that's starting to mold but you don't want to throw it out in case there is a baby in there and you just want to separate it. That is okay to get in the box once or twice during its incubation cycle. You just don't want to be getting in, in there on a regular basis because it'll make the temperature and the humidity fluctuate too much. So I think we've covered all our bases. If we haven't, drop us a comment down below and we will be sure to answer to the best of our ability. And look at we love our sign. It's pretty cool. It's so cool. We still have not found anybody in our area to make a big vinyl sticker of our logo for the front. We are working on that. Hopefully we can get that done soon. Okay, Vanna White. <laughs> but I make it look good. <laughs> da, da, da. Really? <gasps> That's a sexy incubator. It is a very sexy incubator. If you are interested in how we put this incubator together, um, it's always linked in the description below. And I'll throw a card up somewhere in this video. By now, if you've watched it, you've... Be at the top. By now, if you've watched the video, you've probably already <laughs> seen the card go up. 
But that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing our video of picking up our brand new hatchling rock. We are super, super excited for this season. Oh, and hopefully this was helpful getting our tubs together kind of, yeah. It's always a process. It's a learning process and it's a very fun learning process. Always educate yourself, do your due diligence. And you know what? Ask everybody. You know what? Everybody does it just a little bit different. And depending on your needs and your setup, you know, you'll find one out there that works for you. So um, we've taken a lot of advice from different people. And so this is how we have chosen to set it up. Yours may look a little different and that is okay. So again, thank you for watching. You gonna do the outro? I'm doing the outro. I'm doing the outro. What? What? Huh? Stay, stay safe. safe. Stay, stay safe. safe. Get, Get out there and make your own footprints. footprints.